This is Marketplace from APM. I'm Lizzie O'Leary. The situation in Egypt has gotten more violent and more precarious. More than 600 people have died. President Obama canceled joint military exercises scheduled to start next month. And the U.S. government is urging Americans in Egypt to leave the country. Many big businesses there are shutting down operations as well. And the curfew means that local businesses have dramatically shorter hours. Reporter Kimberly Adams is joining us again from Cairo. Kimberly, thanks so much. Thank you. There are reports of businesses pulling out of Egypt. Uh, GM is closing their site there. They're pulling workers out. Do do we have a sense of what effect that's going to have? It's going to have a big effect because it's not just GM. I mean, so far I've heard about GM, Toyota, Royal Dutch Shell, and the Swedish home appliance maker Electrolux. All of them have at least temporarily suspended operations and closed their facilities here in Cairo, saying that they're worried about their employees. Many of them say they plan on reopening in a couple of days, but that has practical implications for people living here. First of all, these companies employ thousands of people, and so that means thousands of people aren't going to work, and they don't really have the same kind of labor rules that we have here, and so it's not clear whether or not those people are still going to be getting their salaries. Also, with the curfew and people commuting, like we talked about yesterday, it's difficult for these companies to be sure that their employees can even come to work, and so it's costing them money as well. How much business do American companies and multinationals actually do? do in Egypt? I mean, if you think about a company like Calvin Klein, for example, has a big factory in which they make a clothing and cotton apparel here. A lot of the companies that Americans will recognize, like Pirelli Tires, have factories here. And again, companies like GM and Toyota, may, even though Toyota is not an American company, it does have a big factory here. And it's not just these big businesses that are being hit or affected. I actually spoke to Wasim El Tanahi. He's the managing director of Media Republic, which runs a lifestyle website website called Cairo 360. It's like a Yelp for Egypt. And he said that because Egyptian businesses have had so many of these curfews and protests, they've really learned that they have to be nimble. It comes at big expense for a lot of companies. Ours is no exception. People try and think on their feet. Decisions are literally made from hour to hour. What time should we open? Something which might open from 5 p.m. till the middle of the night now opens from 10 a.m. till 5 or 6 p.m. whenever the curfew is. So it really keeps people on their toes. It's not a pleasant experience, but it's it's a necessary evil these days, unfortunately. He says that not only is it the opening and closing that causes problems, but it's also the distraction of staff. He pointed out that he now has to let his staff go early, and while they're at work, maybe they're distracted because they're hearing about things happening on the street or they're worried about how they're going to be able to get home through protests. But at the same time, his way of adapting to what's going on is to point out ways that people can get around it. So... For example, on the Cairo 360 website today, they posted a list of all of these restaurants and grocery stores and their curfew hours, including some restaurants that are still delivering after the curfew. Egypt has a pretty big nighttime economy that's very different from the the way companies and small businesses work here in the U.S. Explain that to me a little bit. So, for example, he was mentioning that some businesses might be open until 12 o'clock at night, and now suddenly they have to close at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. And so that means, you know, if you don't open until the afternoon, you're losing more than half of your business in a day. So what are you going to do? Lots of people like to go out and sit at coffee shops that run late into the evening. A lot of people do their shopping in the evening because Cairo is such a huge city and a lot of people have really long commute times, sometimes people just can't do their shopping and their errands until late in the evening. But now they're all stuck at home. Kimberly Adams, thank you so much. Thank you, Lizzie.